Prudence was thinking ahead. He took the calculated gamble of checking in a minute late, which dropped him from fifth to eighth. As it turned out, the weather would play a crucial role in day two's proceedings. With three more cars sweeping the gravel for him, Sainz began to take time off the overnight leader, McRae. But rain interrupted his progress back up the leaderboard. That is working if the weather is dry. If it is wet, it's not working. The first stage was working because it was dry. The second was medium because it was uh, not 100% dry. After all his problems this year, the spotlight was once again on McRae, but for the right reasons for a change. He led, but knew he couldn't risk another costly accident. The pace then was hotting up. It became too hot for Diavia, the early leader. This is the reality of World Championship rallying, where mistakes are cruelly punished. Oriol, meanwhile, was restating his credentials. The fastest time on stage seven was an unmistakable signal that normal service had been resumed. This was a driver rediscovering the private pleasure of making a car bow to his demands. Yet, sometimes, the car answers back. When you're having a bad run, it, really, it often turns out to be a really bad run, and I think that's what we can uh, look at yesterday as being. It's, it's, it's always uncertain. The thing about, about this type of motorsport, you know, you can be so close to being off the road, and that's too far. You've gone forever. McRae, meanwhile, was on the edge. Familiar territory. Minus and open here and right. Sainz, though, was hard on his heels. He was starting to pose a real threat to McRae, although the weather, for the second time, would interfere in his plans. Conditions deteriorated so badly that Bruno Thierry needed flippers and a snorkel. The Belgian could well have been driving through a never-ending car wash at 60 miles an hour. Piero Liati knows only too well that Italy is a country consumed by a passion for motorsport, from Formula One to rallying. It's not hard to see why. McRae was in no mood to hold back. He'd end the day in the lead, just as he'd done on so many other occasions. This time, however, there could be no mistakes, no accidents. At the last service area of the day, the mechanics were asked to produce a car suited to tarmac after two days spent on gravel. They effectively rebuilt it in 80 minutes. Ask your local garage to do the same, and you'd be walking everywhere for a week. Last year, McRae became the youngest ever world champion with Derek Ringer at his side. They say that such relationships are like a marriage, but theirs is heading for divorce. What will Ringer do when their partnership dissolves at the end of the season? Colin's the only driver that I've worked with extensively, and we've, uh, we've worked together a long time, had a lot of uh, very successful results over the years. Um, and, and until I cross that bridge, I can't really answer that question. Sainz and Lewis Moyer might have completely different personalities, but they're a stable couple. Well, I, think, I think that we're still learning is like when you marry your wife, the thing you always know her, and she always appears with new things. So, I mean, our marriage, relationship has been for a long time, and uh, we spend more time with each other than with our wives, so, and obviously it has worked well, as Carlos said. Every marriage has its ups and downs. Piero Liati and Fabrizio Pons were about to hit rock bottom. Day three was the day they'd waited for, worked for. But instead of challenging to win their home event, they were out in the cruelest of ways. The Impreza simply refused to start. Despite Fabrizia's obvious disappointment, the rally went on for Subaru. McRae began the final day with a lead of just 32 seconds. Away from the two-way battle for the lead, the performance of day three was that of Freddy Loix from Belgium, whose Toyota was fastest on three of the final day's seven stages. His relentless progress up the leaderboard from eighth overnight eventually denied Kenneth Eriksson fourth place. Loix's fellow countryman Bruno Thierry began to sense his best result of the season. He set some cracking times on the way to finishing in third place. The mountains high above San Remo were now witnessing a personal battle, and this was a game which wouldn't offer a second chance. The huge drops awaiting the unwary saw to that. 
It began to look like a duel McRae was destined to lose. Sainz slashed the lead by 15 seconds on stage 15. After 370 kilometers of action, only a handful of seconds separated the pair. Sometimes a driver has to be half tire engineer, half weather forecaster. Decisions which could win or lose the rally are often based on nothing more concrete than an educated guess. Carlos, a very difficult choice for you there. Yes, the tire choice is becoming a little bit of a headache because you know you have to choose the, the tires here and make the stage 20 kilometers away and then make another stage later on. So we decide to go with the same tires and Colin. That's it. Can you get inside Colin's mind at this moment? Yeah, for sure. He's thinking similar than me. <laughs> McRae was indeed thinking just like Sainz. Despite the conditions, he focused not on the rain or the enormous crowds, but on Ringer's torrent of information. Sainz would have to be 12 seconds quicker than McRae through the final stage to win. Instead, news crackled over the Subaru team radio that he was 11 seconds slower. After the thrilling final few stages, Subaru management, both British and Japanese, could at last celebrate their second victory of the year, a victory which couldn't have come at a better time. Well, it's very strong for the manufacturer's title now. That helps us enormously. But also, I think it, it puts Colin back on track as well. I think it's very satisfying for me to see Colin really back on form, driven exceptionally well. It wasn't long before the man of the moment arrived, to the applause of his mechanics. Just how satisfying is a win like that? Good, I mean, especially now, because we, obviously with all the hassle I've had this year and the bad results, it's, it's nice to win this rally. This is probably one of the rallies in the championship. It's, it's very good to have in your record as a, a winner. So McRae had 22 seconds to spare, although Ford's consolation came in the form of two podium finishes. That great final day drive by Loix gave Toyota fourth place. Subaru have established a 33-point lead going into the final rally of the season, with Ford now out of contention for the manufacturer's crown. But what of Mackinnon's stricken co-driver Seppo Haryana? Good news, actually. He had a, an MRI scan this morning, and uh, he has this injury on his 12th vertebrae, and it will take two months to, to repair, but uh, he's looking forward to coming back again. He won't, unfortunately, be fit for Catalonia. Seppo apart, all the regulars will meet for the last time this year in Spain next month. But will Sainz get his revenge and run rings around McRae on his home turf?